This is Tom Bernanke. Today I'm going over the ultimate guide. Do you have a wart? Do you have a callus? Or do you have a corn? I'm gonna show you what causes them and the absolute best algorithm of 20 treatment tips for all three. So we're gonna work all the way through and you have to stick around to the end because if you don't treat these and you just leave them alone, there are big problems that could happen. So fix them now. People think that corns, warts, and calluses are no big deal. And about half the time they're right, but our clinic is filled with people ending up in the hospital with infections under their corns, warts, and calluses ulcers, pressure spots, biomechanical deformities. Your body has problems for a reason and you don't want to let that keep going on because these can cause people to develop serious wounds, serious debility, stop playing sports, more problems, suffer psychological issues because they're ashamed of their feet and they can't walk, they can't wear the shoes they want. So let's get that fixed, you know? Don't treat these problems as nothing. Your body is trying to tell you something. So we're talking about three different things, but they usually start with a lump on the bottom of your foot in a pressure area that causes pain. So all three are related until you get to the later treatment steps. So a lot of these treatments were all three, but we're gonna talk about the differences between all three. So number one, we're going to start with a wart. A wart is an actual virus, just like the flu. It's the human papilloma virus. And the human papilloma virus, there's a hundred or so different strains. There's a lot, but there's a lot of common ones. And they infect usually people under 20 years old and usually people over 75 years old. But you can get it in the middle, so between 20 and between 75. And that's usually when you have to put more effort into it because it's not going away. There's five Five layers of skin. So underneath at the bottom, you have the stratum basal, then you have the spinous layer, then you have granulosum layer, then you have the stratum lucidium, and then you have the stratum corneum. Not all of them go all the way through, but the wart burrows its way through all five layers. So it goes through all five. It even bursts through your stem cells. So it destroys your skin. If you were to remove it, you'd have an ulcer. And it actually steals your blood supply. It steals your nerves. It's essentially a hitchhiking parasite that eliminates your skin and is living on your body. It's not part of your body. It's like an alien. And that's pretty gross. So you wanna get rid of that. The good news is in young kids, they usually go away within two years on their own, but they can really hurt in the meantime. In people 20 to 75, they can stick around because it's usually a more resistant layer. Or if you're over 75, your immune system's dipping, so you wanna put more effort into them. And a wart's kind of a big deal for that reason. You know, it can spread, it's contagious, it can get your family, and it can take six months to show up, so you don't even know when you caught it or where. A corn, on the other hand, it doesn't go through the five layers, but it really burrows its way down deep, maybe through about four layers. It's basically like a supercharged callus that spikes its way down through the layers. And what happens is it looks like a corn kernel that's wedged in your skin. The difference between a corn and a callus is a callus is more superficial on top of the skin, it's wider, and it's more of the two outer layers of skin, the stratum lucidium and the stratum corneum. These are skin cells that you can exfoliate. Whereas a corn, you really gotta get in there with a scalpel or something deep if you're really gonna get rid of it. You can't just exfoliate a corn. So a corn is like a spiked, deeper version of callus that you really wanna attack and get rid of because it's almost like walking on a rock all day except the rock is under your skin. Corns are very painful. We frequently see them lead to ulcers, bruising, inability to walk, inability to wear comfortable, good shoes. And this is what stops people from playing sports or older people from going on walks. So you don't wanna live with this. It's gonna destroy the quality of your life in a lot of cases. That's why people are online watching this video. So diagnosis, we're getting to the treatments in a second, but podiatrist generally treats your foot lesions. So what happens is, number one, you wanna get an x-ray because there's usually pressure spots or some type of biomechanical deformity causing these pressure areas or maybe a skin condition like psoriasis 
or eczema or some sweating uh, dysfunctions or maybe sometimes an easily correctable medical disorder. If you think it's something more dangerous like a melanoma or a basal cell carcinoma, maybe some type of cyst, you know, a podiatrist can biopsy this pretty much right away in the office and get a sample from the pathology lab. We work with the hospital and we get an answer pretty quickly if there's any problems. So on to the 10, 10, the top 20 cure guide. There's too many to list, so I'm just gonna go through my list here without naming them every time. But number one, you want to look at biomechanical deformities. So realistically, if you're a tiny little kid, you're not getting pressure spots on your feet. And what happens is corns, warts, calluses, they're all related to pressure spots because they cause fissures opening in your skin where viruses, corns, and everything can get into and develop problems. So the lighter you are, the better you are. That's where I'm gonna leave it as far as the weight issue. Everybody already knows they have to get lighter, healthier. But what you don't know is there's easy biomechanical issues. So if you look at a foot right here, if you have a bunion, if you have a tailor's bunion with the fifth toe, if you have too much pressure on the ball of your foot, usually these pressure areas, so around the big toe, around the fifth toe, in between the fourth and the fifth toes common, in between the toes, especially if you wear tight shoes that squeeze your toes, that creates pressure spots. It's an easy opportunity to fix things. So talking with your podiatrist, you could look at your bunion, your hammer toes, your ball of the foot pain. The biggest one for me is tightness through the Achilles tendon. If you're tight through your hamstring, if you have a tight back, tight hips, this will put a lot of abnormal pressure, poor flexibility onto your feet. That's the single biggest reason you're not developing uh, enough flexibility to keep pressure off your corns and calluses. The second easiest thing cor to correct beyond flexibility, and that's stretching your joints and muscles, is shoes. Look at how flexible shoes like this are. Look at how pointy they are in the front. If you look at your toes and they're squeezing up in there, that's gonna squeeze your toes together. So if you get a good running shoe like that, look at the mesh here. Look at that mesh. It's all soft, nothing hard. There's no stitching there. So you want a shoe that's firm. You want a shoe with a stiff back and you want a shoe with mesh in the front where your toes perfectly land. And you also wanna to touch your finger between, and this is when you're standing. It's very important to stand when you fit your shoes because a lot of people put their shoes on while they're sitting in the chair. Your feet expand by about one size while you get up and stand. You want the tip of your big toe or your second toe, whichever is longest, to have one finger length between the front and the end. We actually go over a guide so you don't have too loose of shoes or too tight of shoes because both are problems. If you wear a gigantic shoe, you're sliding around inside your shoe. If it's too tight of a shoe, that's how you develop hammer toes, tight toes, squeeze together bunion uh, and fifth toes. That's what causes a lot of the problem. Then the next thing you wanna do is watch this. As your foot lands, it flattens out. But watch this. When I take out the orthotic inside my shoe right here, right there, look it. There's no pressure. It's not shifting back and forth. So the side to side motion is what causes your toes to get cracks that viruses get into, corns, calluses. So a good insole, and again, they're linked below, will stop that side to side motion with a good shoe. And this is for people so you could play more sports, go for walks. You can't really do that in a shoe like that. And that really gets into high heels dress shoes, especially for men, Oxford dress shoes can really do it with a heel. Uh, nursing shoes like dance goes, um, you know, uh, teachers especially because your foot comes down on an angle into the front. It's not a great long-term strategy. And same thing, you don't wanna walk around barefoot at home because this is happening right here. There are low cost slippers with orthotics. We're talking like 20, 30, 40 bucks in a lot of cases for a nice slipper. Like right here, look at an orthotic slipper right there. This is not expensive right here. And you can wear these in the winter or great supportive sandals that you could wear in the summer. So there's no excuse. These things are cheap online now or at a good running shoe store. 
Another one is a good sock. So there's breathable socks now. So wool socks, nice uh, cotton socks, a lot of cushion. That's thought of that rubbing in the front of your shoe. It gives you a lot of cushion. Same thing, moisturizing. You can get some Vaseline. You can get other lotions. If your feet are scaly, if they're dry, especially in the winter, with a good pair of soft socks, that's a lot of cushion. Another one is duct tape right there so over warts that are painful over calluses that are painful just grab a piece of duct tape and put that on there as this works great for the bottom of the foot the back of the heel maybe not great in between the toes that's a terrible spot to put it so you'll have to do other things here's stuff you can do little toe gel pads these can go onto the toe like this so you can put these onto your toe there's heel gel pads so look at this you can put this onto the heel like this these are dirt cheap. That's if you need to wear high heels. For your heel, if your heel needs better grip, you can stick something like this on the back of your heel into the shoe. So we're talking something like this right here. And all these things are linked down below. Look at this as well, a bunion guard. It goes onto your bunion, onto the second toe and big toe, just like that. That takes a lot of pressure off the big toe, second toe rubbing. You can get another one that goes over the fifth toe, like this, look at that. That's for the fourth and fifth toe. You can get another one that fits a little bit better right there on the big toe. That'll take cushion off your bunion. There's no shortage. Look at this too. I got a tube one right here. Look at this, it's a tube. This will go on to any toe right there. So look at that, that tube, obviously I gotta cut it a little bit, but that will go on to any toe. This works wonders right off the bat. You can you still wear your high heels, your other shoes, even though it's not the ideal shoe, but if you have a business meeting, wear those shoes. That can help quite a bit. And remember, we have a shoe fitting guide, so check the links to those videos. Learn how to fit a shoe properly. We spend too much time going over that in detail to make it fit for you. And also moisturize. If you have these hard lumps, these hard skin formations, get some lotion on there. When you go to bed at night, put some Vaseline, some cocoa butter, CeraVe, anything that's available at stores. You don't have to get fancy, but get thicker creams. It will help you more and you'll start to feel better pretty quickly. Beyond lotion, foot soaks. So there's a lot of home remedies. If you need a foot bath, put some lukewarm water in it to soak your feet. I'm a huge fan of Epsom salts. They're like $1.99 for a huge bucket at the store. Epsom salts do, the salt goes into your dead dry skin, your corns and calluses and they get puffy. So what you can do, that makes it easier for a podiatrist, disclaimer, don't do this stuff at home, but I have heard of people using pumice stones, then moisturizing afterwards, this really softens up your skin so it's less irritated. That takes a lot of that dry skin off. That means less room for athlete's foot, less room for bacteria, fungus. This works great for thick toenails, toenail fungus, uh, dry skin, athlete's foot, foot soaks, exfoliating, and then lotions afterwards, you can't beat that. And then great socks, great shoes. Oh man, you're solving all kinds of foot problems. I am just dropping nuggets that will save you tons of foot pain. This stuff just works so well. So now exfoliating. Realistically, I can't tell you to do it at home. Even though there are some nice products out there, you have to be safe, especially if you're a diabetic, especially if you smoke, especially if you're over 65 and your skin is more fine. Hey, a podiatrist can do this for you and it's covered. All insurances generally cover stuff. This is not cosmetic. It's not like going for a pedicure, even though those places aren't bad either. They do a great job. But what a podiatrist can do is, do you have any other skin conditions? Evaluate your biomechanics. And we can use a scalpel, a blade, debriding equipment. And what happens is a callus is very easy to trim down. A corn, you actually have to get in there with a blade and scoop it out a little bit better. And a wart, we can do the same thing, scoop it out and get some medications in there all at the same time. It just depends how deep we have to go. Generally, this is the quickest and most efficient way to do it, but I know a lot of people want to do it at home, but it is dangerous. Just be safe. And we're here as podiatrists. If you need that and this stuff is covered, don't be ashamed and embarrassed about this stuff. It is a health condition that requires help to prevent bigger and badder problems from developing. And you need to have a good healthy foot to start walking and moving. 
So surgery, on the other hand, all three of these, a callus doesn't really need surgery, but if a corn is really deep and bruised and you're starting to form a wound, or if your wart is super deep and super large, we have numbing creams. There's light, easy injections. You barely feel them now. Again, that's by most people saying that. Some people feel them, but most people, say it feels way better than they thought they would. And there's no shortage of videos online showing how this is done now, but it's numbed up. It stays numb the rest of the day. We can use a blade to scoop it out. It's relatively safe. You can call us if there's any need for medications or pain or anything that happens. This generally does really well. So continuing with surgery, now we're down to corns and calluses. What's the prognosis? We can solve them pretty easily, but they come back in three to four months in most people because again, we mentioned weight, biomechanics, shoe gear. It's kind of like you crashing into a wall because your brakes aren't working. Fixing the brakes is harder, but we can replace your windshield and your bumper. Kind of trimming a corn to callus is like fixing a bumper and a windshield after a car crash. You still have to fix the brakes so you don't get into a car crash three months later. And that means too much pressure, too much soreness, the wrong type of shoes, lack of flexibility, arthritis in different places, not moisturizing, not soaking, all that stuff still helps. A podiatrist gets you out of trouble, but you still have to prevent a lot of this yourself if you want a permanent cure, and a permanent cure is possible. That being said, getting rid of a corn, you're gonna feel the best you've felt in a long time for at least three to six months, maybe even more. So down to a wart. So we've shaved the wart, we've trimmed the callus. Underneath all that, we find out it's a wart. A wart means there's pinpoint blood vessels and nerves visualized. So generally, there are acids you could put on there. So there's salicylic acids. You could buy these over the counter at the convenience store. The problem is most people never make it through the callus because all warts have a callus on top for the most part and people don't trim the callus and it looks like it's getting better but you're really just softening the callus with the wart underneath. And the problem is the wart just grows right back. So what you wanna do, you wanna use those first 19 treatments we just talked about. And number 20 is treating the wart. So with your podiatrist, you can put duct tape on it. That will soften up the hard callus and keep it less painful. So with duct tape, kind of as I showed right here, there's no, it's not the glue that's like a medication. It just keeps it sealed up so it's not spreading. It keeps it more moist as a result, less dry and softer. And if you're under 20, it usually goes away within about two years in most cases. But what happens is, so I'm a big fan of this because there's no downside to the duct tape unless it's between your toes. And then you wanna trim up the callus and soften it. And then you wanna put salicylic acid or other stronger types of acids. I won't even name them because they're not really for home use. We have some strong medication we can put on as podiatrists. Is there a benefit to using laser or liquid nitrogen? Maybe, the studies don't really prove it. It's really cool to use. Like when somebody brings in liquid nitrogen to freeze that wart, that looks pretty sweet. Like, I mean, patients get excited about that. Same thing, a laser, like what is this, Austin Powers? Absolutely, I would love a laser to attack the wart. But are the studies really showing that it's beneficial? Not really. Like we can guarantee, I can guarantee you to get rid of your wart, not guarantee, like let's say 95 plus percent. If you freeze up, that wart with an injection and I scoop out that wart and apply medication to the root, the wart's pretty much gone in five minutes. You know, if it comes back, that's maybe because a couple viral particles still stuck around and reinfected you, but that wart is pretty much done for sure, but it's like a wound. So usually if some people are sick of their wart, especially if it's like a huge mushroom-like wart that's making it hard to walk, people come in, I freeze it, I inject it, and then underneath, we scoop it out and they wear a surgical dressing for one to two days over a weekend. I usually do this on Fridays if they don't have anything because it's not urgent. And in the office, it's gone. Then you do good. So then you still gotta do all that good stuff. Get rid of the pressure spots, get your flexibility, soak, moisturize, do that. And that will guarantee you 95 plus, nothing's guarantee that those three things, your calluses, your corns, your warts will go away. If that helped, leave a comment and subscribe. We love to hear from our fans. So give us a great comment and subscribe. We're gonna bring you the absolute best foot care guides.